allegiances have been tested. Those who remain stand no chance. guys we are back this is nfc 29 you just watched the trailer for for block lords and let me tell you guys i know you're as excited as i am that is absolutely beautiful and uh i can't wait to dive into this i can't wait to play the game i can't wait to ask these questions uh we are sitting here with david johansson who is the ceo of MetaKing studios and we have a lot of questions for you today and uh first david why don't you introduce yourself let us know about you and uh uh, and what you want to talk about today. We're going to talk about some Block Lords. Talk to us. Yeah, I mean, we're here to talk about Block Lords. We're here to talk about Web3 Gaming. And uh, I think we're just here to talk about the state of state of gaming in general. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm David Johansson, CEO of Block Lords. Sweaty from the gym, as you can see, but ready to <laughs> talk gaming. Uh, essentially, uh, been in gaming for the last 10 years. Started off as a, as a content editor. Worked my way up to creative director. Worked on a number of free-to-play games on the Facebook and mobile side. Uh, my probably coolest job in gaming was working for Paradox as a content designer on a Crusader King series. So kind of a well-rounded uh, experience in the gaming industry. Saw a lot of opportunity with free-to-play gaming as I kind of got into that industry more and more, but also saw a lot of issues. Essentially, I saw a lot of users that were spending you know thousands of hours uh, uh, spending all of their love right into these games they were playing. But then at the end of the day, they didn't own any of the assets they created they didn't uh, really own a piece of the games that they were spending so much time and so much effort in and so when i discovered bitcoin in 2017 uh, kind of fell down the you know the ico rabbit hole and, and and saw the fun that was you know investing in crypto and just building crypto communities um 2018 we kind of decided hey let's let's dedicate ourselves uh, ourselves fully to crypto gaming and uh, that's kind of when it all started uh, back in 2018 yeah, that's that's a major thing for all gamers, and we've all been there. You know, depending what whatever game it is you play, uh, you put the money into the game and you get nothing back of it. Once you delete that game or turn that game off, it's over. Everything you put in is gone. And and I feel like that's the way of the past. And I truly, truly believe in Web three and blockchain gaming, like absolutely one hundred percent. It is very, very, very nice to have you here. Uh, we are huge, huge um, believers, and we can in, in block lords, and we cannot wait to get our hands on this. Um, so this is very exciting for us. Uh, WT, how have you been? Tell us about yourself a little bit uh, before we dive into all this. Gotta tell you, I have been really looking forward to this meeting. <laughs> We've been going back and forth with the uh, block lords uh, Discord brass, trying to set this up, and I'm I'm super hyped about this. I'm a little low on sleep right now, but I'm pushing through. I'm amped up with some caffeine because like I am not missing today because I wanted to be here for this. Uh, David, thanks for coming on. Absolutely love. I it, it always rings my ears when I hear an old, you know, an old school guy. And it's funny, it's only been five years, but you know an old school guy when they can mention ICO, because all the new school guys, they don't even know what that is. They're like, when mint? But before <laughs> yeah. it was when mint, it was when ICO. So that, that's yeah. music to my ears. That cracks me up every time, but uh, glad to be here. Awesome. Yeah, and before we get started, guys, make sure that you do sign up on blocklords.com. Uh, you can get your free hero um, that will also get you access to the first gameplay that will be released, I believe, by the end of this year. Is that, is that correct? And it's a farming gameplay? Yeah, end of this year, we may go into early next year. You know, we yep. want to provide the best uh, experience possible. So we don't we don't put a hard date on, on the releases, mm -hmm. uh, but there is a lot coming before then. Obviously, we've just launched the first cinematic trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, we do want to build a, 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 a one-of-a-kind narrative around the Blockboards universe, and we want to show people that when you get your hands on a Blockboards NFT, whether it's a farmer, 
or warrior or lord, you're part of this history that we're starting to create, right? And uh, while the game is still a bit away, we are going to get people active on the in the community with our video content, with our NFTs, essentially. Yeah, I always say this. It's it's one of those things you want. You don't want to rush this. You want to make sure it's right and get it right because you have one crack at it. And uh, and if that if that trailer is any indication of the quality that you guys put into this game, uh, my mind is blown. I'm telling you right now. I'm 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 all in and I'm I'm loving it. I'm I'm definitely going to be very 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 involved uh, in this. Uh, you've actually all, uh, also uh, raised 15 mil from uh, like Animoca Brands, Makers Fund, Bitcraft Venture, and like a bunch of other. Um, companies. First of all, anything with Animoca brands on it is just A+. Plus, and uh, that's like A++++. Plus plus plus, and you guys are just crushing it. So people believe in you, which is amazing. And uh, you know that can go a long way. So that's awesome to hear. And I'm very, very, very excited about that. Uh, so you were saying like this game, this game is very similar to like Civilization, uh, Age of Empires, Total War, Crusader Kings, but it has like a Game of Thrones uh, feel. Break that down a little bit because I'm a big Game of Thrones fan and a lot of those games you mentioned I'm a big fan of. I love Civilization, played it for many years. So uh, it's just more and more music to my ears. Uh, break it all down. Yeah, so essentially Block Lords comes from uh, a desire of, of, of a game I've always wanted to play, right? And, and this, uh, I grew up with Total War, essentially. Uh, I think uh, the first Total War game, Shogun Total War, uh, came out, and then Medieval, the first Medieval Total War came out. This is like the early, late 90s, early 2000s, I believe. And uh, I was just hooked, you know, this idea that, okay, I've got I've got my ruler, and then I have a map, and I just love staring at this map and just thinking for hours, okay, what's my next move? Do I go for, for these this powerful kingdom next door? That's the real goal. Or do I go, like, split apart a few little kingdoms first? grow my kingdom and then you know launch a full-scale war so i've just always loved these types of games you know crusader kings actually i'm here in stockholm paradox is the office uh, behind <laughs> right behind me uh so I've, I've always been into these types of uh, uh strategy games anything from civilization to uh to total war uh and and, and really i since i've been making games you know for the last 10 years I've always felt there was a piece missing and it was this, it was a game that could really combine the, this feeling of being an almighty ruler, right? Like, like Paradox does so well with their Crusader King series, right? Where you're looking at the map from far above and you're managing, you know, how many boots are being created for your soldiers, uh, where you're managing the marriages of your family members, where you're managing, you know, uh, anything from basic resource management to a uh, big uh, diplomatic or, or uh, character uh, intrigues, right? This is what we call grand strategy. And I've always been a big grand strategy player. And that's it. On the other end of that spectrum, you have the RTS games, right? The real-time strategy games where the big, you know, macro strategy stuff doesn't matter so much, but where it's all about tactics. You know, how many farmers am I producing? How much wheat am I capturing? How many troops can I create from that weed? And then just at the end of the day, the satisfying part is kind of launching this attack, right? And so what I felt, what I've been feeling for a long time was missing from the market was essentially an MMO game that combined the best of grand strategy with the grand, uh, with the best of, of real-time strategy, right? So in essence, a game where you could be anything from a powerful ruler that manages thousands of subjects in an entire nation while also being able to be a small soldier who's just launching a little raid or a farmer who's just focused on the farming element. And uh, th there were some games that tried to do that. You could say Game of War was on the mobile, on the mobile platform. I don't know if you guys remember that yeah. about oh, 10 yeah. years ago or yeah. eight years oh, ago. Yeah. I'd say they, tr they, tr they gave it the, the best shot, I'd say. And I mean, they were extremely successful, uh, but at the same time, they simplified a lot of this so much and they, they focused so much on the free to play element that it kind of like lost meaning to players like us. But uh, but essentially, many games haven't really tried to do that, right? Like the 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 games that focus on uh, grand strategy or or real time strategy, they've been kind of like too stuck in their niche, and their niche is so PC single player focused or instance based. You know, where you have like yeah, you have one game, one one linear progression, and then you kind of start over again. But and I, I honestly think that this game is not possible with the economics because what ends up happening in these, sorry, I'm rambling, but I'm no, not, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm loving it. So yeah, soaking this <laughs> don't in stop. Before. Don't stop. I'm, I'm yeah. all ears. <laughs> uh, but essentially what's, what's missing from, for, from being, what, what's preventing a game like this from being made essentially is 
uh, incentives, right? Because in an MMO game, you kind of, you kind of, or let, let me rephrase, in a strategy game, you kind of have to prevent blobbing, right? You have to prevent one user from being all powerful right. and then taking over the right. entire map. And then what you have to do is reset everything. Yeah. And what, what Web3 is going to allow us to do here is we're going to be able to incentivize players to essentially fight each other, right? So <laughs> when a powerful king becomes too powerful, the incentives to attack that king are going to be huge, right? And that's kind of like one, one of the elements, the core fundamental ideas that we have uh, with making block boards, uh, a Web3 online strategy game, you could say, uh, is that not only are we going to be able to incentivize balance by keeping the incentives aligned between different types of rulers, but also with this asymmetrical incentive system that we have where the farmers essentially generate the prime resources. Mm -hmm. And then the warriors, they either steal those resources or they protect those who provide those resources. And then the lords, they provide this taxation incentive, right? Where they they the more they tax people, well, the worse it is for the farmer, but also the more services they can provide, right? And right. because they're providing those services, they can earn more taxes, but now they have a responsibility to protect the farmers, right? And at the top, you have the kings, and the kings are going to be just waging wars <laughs> and researching technology that's going to uh, incentivize everyone in their king. So I think I'm kind of like snowing myself in a bunch of different fields, but to kind of answer the, uh, to kind of answer the main question here is... I strongly, strongly believe that an MMO online strategy game of this type would not be possible uh, without Web3. And that's that's the opportunity we see essentially with Blockboards. Wow, that is amazing. That's a lot to take in and a lot of amazing information. Like I'll tell you, I, I, I love all of that. There's That's the one thing about this game I noticed. It's so intricate. There's so many just even different ways to play. If you want to play as a farmer, you play as a farmer. If you want to raid, you raid. If you want to try to get to be a king, you be a king. There's so many different ways to play the game, uh, which I think is huge. And and I love that. And you were talking about, you know, farming and raiding and being the king and and you got to have the wheat. And every, every the best part is, you know, you don't need to you don't need to be the king. Every single person, and if it's a farmer or a raider, is useful. You need everything for the for the system to work. And I like that. Uh, if people want to go in and be a farmer, be a farmer. People want to go like me. I'm I'm one of those guys. I want to go and attack everything. That's just the way I am. Yeah. So when you'd say, you know. The, there's incentives to go and take you know if somebody becomes too powerful take them out i'm the kind of guy that's like yo guys let's go take this person out like i'm that kind of guy so it's like you know when someone gets too powerful let's go guys like let's that's march so i like that i like that kind of thing uh and you know kind of work together and stuff and you were talking about you know there's the breeding there's just so many different levels of this game that it just blows my mind and i just want to play everything i just want to try everything so um yeah wt i know you uh you love the breeding aspect and the meat aspect uh what, what do you want to bring up about the breeding he loves the mead thing oh, by the way boy I, I i was just dying laughing with the the mead factor that there has to be mead involved to get the breeding going so i was whoever came <laughs> up with that you're cracking me up thank you so much for making me smile uh yeah that everything that you said there was so much there th there's so many layers to this game it, a lot of things that you were saying was like questions and things that we were bringing up uh, the last time we made a video about this and like how are you guys going to balance this all was just like, cause it's, it's so massive. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm, there's a lot of political things going on in my head that could go along with this game that I don't want to make this too complex in this interview, but I'm thinking about it. I'm like, man, there could be all kinds of backstabbing with these Lords and, and ganging up on a King or a King knowing that's coming and like trying to take out certain Lords and ladies and, there's, there's, it's very Games of Thrones-ish, and Games of Thrones, I absolutely, my favorite character is probably very vanilla, like everybody, Tyrion Lannister, I mean, he's just awesome, and I, I love the stuff that you're doing with this, man, and uh, hats off to you guys. Yeah, and that's, that's a very good point, it is extremely complicated, and it's extremely intricate, and how, how we do it is going to be uh, very important, and that's, that is why we're essentially taking it step by step. And right now, uh, we're very developed, uh, very focused on the farming, essentially. We want to make sure that the farming, since that's going to be the entry level gameplay for everyone, since that's going to kind of really be the grinder, you know, how, how you kind of get started, how you earn your core resources, how you learn about the game. We're putting a lot of focus on farming, making sure that that's balanced, making sure, you know, I think right now we have 10 buildings. Uh, that farmers are going to be able to manage and there's going to be, you know, different levels for these buildings. So we're kind of following a lot of pretty regular tropes. If you look at a game like Age of Empires, when you're setting up your initial farm, 
Uh, and then what we're looking at very carefully, okay, how are the users spending the resources? Uh, how are we going to make it fun over the long term to manage your farm? And then we're starting to add, uh, then we're going to start adding the different intricacies, which is, okay, how can NFTs lead squads? Uh, we are actually doing a squad system for farmers to make it a bit more dynamic compared to a game, you know, like Stardew Valley, where you're kind of just, or a farm bill, right? Where you're just clicking uh, and, and uh, claiming resources. We do want it to be a bit interactive. Uh, but so, so essentially to, to answer the question, we start, we, we split the game into a lot of different focus segments, right? Which is uh, farming, raiding, knights battles, PVP battles, lord versus lord battles, lord rebellions, right? Because farmers mm -hmm. will be able to rebel against their lords. Um, and, and then, of course, king uh, gameplays, which will be the ultimate meat grinder where kingdoms declare war against each other. But, you know, like in real life, when there's war, nobody usually wins. I mean, it is very, very hard for the society when there's a war. And we do want that to be reflected in the game while there can, of course, be incentives for whoever wins it. Uh, and yeah, the most complicated intricate system is the dynasty system, where essentially NFTs can get married with other NFTs and have children. And of course, the ultimate part of the dynasty system, which is that NFTs uh, heroes will actually die and this we think is kind of a game changer in this space in that uh -huh. making the NFT not just this, okay, forever speculative piece of art investment, which has kind of been the driving narrative, which is fine. It's one use case for NFTs. It's one use case for Web 3 but I'm much more interested in the NFT kind of like as a in-game commodity and as something that you still own forever, but that's actually temporary within your game. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, that we could also potentially revive in future games as well Ooh, very cool yeah because uh i wanted to bring that up with like the the aging system because everyone ages as, at a global rate right it's if you're playing or not it doesn't matter everyone's aging at the same uh, same level now when you mint your nft are the does everyone start at the same age or is it random um how does that work so the initial the initial mint everyone will start at the base age uh, I, I, I had to double check if we've set specific ages for the lords who are unique because they, they actually look at different ages. So we may have mm -hmm. to we may have to set ages on that. So right. I can't give a, a clear answer on that. But essentially, during the phase one of the launch or phase one and phase two, which is essentially the NFT launch and the early access launch, there will be no aging. So essentially, during the early access, we don't have NFT permadeath activated yet. We don't have aging oh, activated yet. But then later on, once we activate the aging, it's like you say, yes, everyone will start aging and uh, then the, the clock is ticking. Essentially. That's right. amazing. And speaking of permit, like, permadeath, like, there's just so many things that I'm just obsessed <laughs> with. The permadeath thing, I love that. Uh, you know, and, and there's different ways to play the game with more risk, more reward, or you can play more passively as we talked about with the farmers and the raiders and stuff. Now, if I'm, ra say I'm a raider and I'm raiding a, a farmer's land, can the farmer die? Can I kill the farmer by raiding them? Or is the risk all on me for going in to raid? Yeah, so we don't, we don't want to be too punishing, especially mm -hmm. with farmer players who are just here at the end of the day right. trying to live their lives. So essentially, no, you're not going to lose your farmer or your, even your lord or your king. You, you're, you're usually going to get a lot of warnings before your character dies, and you're not just going to get like a one-off, oh, sorry, your character's yeah. dead. You know, better luck next time. So <laughs> essentially, uh, uh, death from battles, usually the onus is on the attacker, right? Yeah. It's more this idea of like, Hey, you attacked this. You 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 lost this battle, right? Okay, your hero got injured. Now, if you attack again with an injured hero, yeah, there's a chance you might lose them in battle, right? right. Uh, there's going to be some randomized elements, like okay, you get a disease, right? You get the rot, which is going to be there's like a, uh, essentially in the lore of block lords, which are still developing. That used to be like a plague that swept through the land mm -hmm. and kind of like took out almost everyone, and that's why now the farmers are able to kind of settle anywhere. Because, you know, this plague has taken out everything. So the rot is like a big underlying menace in the game's lore. And essentially, if you get the rot, yeah, your character has a pretty limited time span. And it's about time you get some kids if you, if you, if you <laughs> Let's get, get that rot, mead. Let's get the, yeah. I yeah. tell you, listen, I'm obsessed mead. with this game. I'm obs I could ask you a million questions. I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the heirs, so I, I, I have a, a question about that. So how does it work? Do you have to make a will? Uh, is everything kind of automatic? Because like, say, say I have some kids out somewhere and they're out and about doing their thing. I die. Do they just immediately, all of a sudden, they get some stuff put, like airdrop to them? How does that work? Like, do they just all of a sudden they own land? Do I have to make a will about it? Like, how, how does that system work? Because I'm, you know, how does it just get split, you know? Yeah, so essentially it's still being developed. So I can't give all the details yet uh, for the dynasty system specifically. But the way it will be is you will have, several children right ideally most players will have several children and you can designate your heir 
right? You can't designate, okay, this person will inherit everything after I die. Uh, that said, there are going to be some resources that get allocated to all of your children. So there is also a scenario where, you know, because some people will do that, right? They'll breed like a lot of kids and then start selling them off to other players, right? <laughs> and we do want to put some mechanisms in place so that if you do that, actually, whoever bought your kid will have a piece of the inheritance as well. And if you were to die within an heir, then that could go to that player. This is obviously extremely complicated. Yeah. So we are oh, yeah. devising a lot of systems and a lot of fail safes. Uh, but we want to go as deep as we can and probably we'll have to do it step by step, right? But ideally, we would like an inheritance system similar to Crusader Kings where uh, essentially, you know, depending on the inheritance laws of your kingdom, uh, the rules are different, right? So you could have one kingdom where females inherit first, right? Where you could have one kingdom where uh, they have to split equally all of the wealth, right, between children, which was pretty the, uh, the norm in early Europe, uh, medieval times, right? So uh, there's a lot we can do there. But for now, we're trying to just keep it simple because it could get super complex if we don't. I know that's that's like the the thing the the theme is just like this game is so complex, so intricate. There's so many moving parts. Uh, you guys are geniuses, and or or maybe you guys are crazy to put it together. No, it's awesome. Like you guys are, it is it is incredible to see. And uh, you know, you've mentioned some games that you know that have similar attack, like similar uh, aspects, and they're all incredible games. And and you're taking like the best features and and putting it together into one beautiful game. And I love that. I, I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, I know. W, uh, go ahead, uh, WT. I gotta ask a hypothetical here, and you can shut it down right now, or you can embellish it. It's up to you. So in the in the theme spirit of Game of Thrones, would it be something potentially down the road? And I know you guys are starting off basic and working up, but like, let's say you have two kids, you sell off one to somebody and they know you're super wealthy. So they target your heir to knock up their, that heir and then you so that the kid that they bought from you can take your resources, yeah. any kind of Game of Thrones style stuff like that potentially down the road. Potentially, yes. I mean, I can't promise oh, it man. in the next few years, but yeah, if we if we get to where I want to be, then definitely that's that's the this game thing. could be cold. This could this be cold. Is, it's my kind of game. That's my kind of. I love it. You got to be on your toes, you know, head on a swivel. Um, I like that. So I, you also mentioned there was a thing about share to earn, right? You guys uh, mentioned kind of like a share to earn kind of thing. Is that uh, is there anything you can kind of elaborate on that, like how that would work? Is it it's kind of a, it's going to incentivize you to kind of like yeah, if you do have a lot of assets. Maybe it's like a, is it like a rental system? How would that work? What's a share to earn? What is that? Can we explain how that, yeah, uh, how that I, works? Yeah, I think I said pay to share. I don't, uh, we, we throw around a lot of concepts internally. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's this idea. And we think that's desperately needed because we've seen a lot of play to earn games. Uh, uh, essentially, the, 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 the promise with play to earn is huge, right? I mean, everyone sees it. Like this idea that, okay, everyone's contributing to these games whether it's their time, whether it's their effort, whether it's their money, a lot of people are contributing a lot of things to these games. But what's going to happen in Play to Earn is that essentially games release uh, a token and then that token is worth something and then everyone activates to just extract as much of that token as possible out of the game and it kind of becomes a lose-lose, right? Because the the game kind of loses excited users, right? Because the users are making less and less and then it's extracting value out of the game and essentially it all gets sold and it doesn't get really reinvested into the game. And at the end, everybody loses, right? And then the game's ecosystem gets abandoned. So this idea with block towards asymmetrical incentives is that different types of users, they earn different ways and they contribute different ways, right? And so that that's that's really at the heart of block. And it's at the heart of this idea of pay to share because... Uh, something that often comes up, uh, you know, when I pitch this game or when I talk to our designers and such is, uh, oh, yeah, but what if someone just pays a lot and then becomes really powerful? Uh, well, yes, that's that's possible, right? Like a lord who pays a lot and, and, and it improves their 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 castle to be like this amazing, amazing castle that nobody can attack, right? Yes, they have an advantage against other lords, maybe, or it's going to be extremely difficult to rebel against them and take their lordship. But as they improve this castle, all of a sudden, every farmer in the region is safer, right? right. All of the farmers in the region get a boost. Or, or like uh, if the Lord keeps improving the city and the infrastructure, all of the farmers are all of a sudden going to get better uh, resource production. And, and, you know, maybe you could even uh, build a church and get better weather, right? I'm just kind of throwing some, <laughs> some concepts out. Like if you, if you pray for good weather, you'll get better weather. And, and it's really this idea that 
if the lords or the kings uh, invest a lot in their kingdoms or in their in the regions, everyone who works in that region will benefit from it, right? And will thus work harder or will maybe attract other farmers to join. So it's really this idea that, yes, some whale players will always invest more, but they shouldn't be the only ones who benefit, which is currently the problem in play to earn, uh -huh. right? Because if a whale... If a whale buys all of the high-level NFTs and just starts extracting value out of the ecosystem, it, it, it becomes kind of that lose-lose situation. But if they invest in the game and it improves also the lives of other players, then we kind of end up with these mechanics where these different groups of people are fighting against each other. And hopefully we get a more competitive spirit and a more fun game ecosystem. Yeah, I like that answer a lot. And, and we've talked about it many times on the podcast where it's, you know, that's the thing is a lot of times you get these investors, you get one whale or whatever, and then, yeah, they can extract and all that stuff. So I like how you have a mechanism in play. Uh, and there's also like the mead and stuff where, you know, there's that burning mechanic. You have mechanics in play to kind of balance that and counter that, which I like. And yeah. so, yeah, where you're saying you have the whales. And it's, you know, it's trickling down to everybody. So it's not just them that's benefiting. It's everybody's going to benefit. And I think that's another answer for it. I think that's a really good answer for it because uh, you don't see you don't see that solution in a lot of these games. And that's where like a, exactly like a problem could happen. But you, you seem to have a really good uh, counter to it. And it's very interesting to see how that's going to turn out because, yeah, the, even though because, yeah, there's the whale, but we all are going to benefit from someone from supporting the game. So it keeps it all in, in the, in the system, which I, I like that. I, I like that answer. I think that's a really, really, really good answer. Um, WT, what are your thoughts on that? That's really good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we know that YGG and I believe double peak are coming into your ecosystem. Most likely probably some other ones eventually. Uh, well, I think we said this last time we talked about this on our video is like, this isn't a game to go alone on. So you're going to have to pick a Legion and go with them because otherwise you're going to get squashed real fast. So it's going to be interesting to see that dynamic play out. And I can see what you're talking about. Uh, the, these large guilds or large whales coming in and they're going to have to incentivize the worker bees basically to come and uh, hang out in their ecosystem to promote their ecosystem. So I can see potentially how that's going to work out. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'm very interested to see. I, I, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see, these large guilds facing off against each other or these large whales facing off against each other and see how all that plays out. So yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool stuff. I'm going to be going, I'm going to be attacking. Like I'm just going to send them out, man. My guys are not going to be resting. They're going to be like, give me a chance give me a rest. I mean, Nope. Send them out to attack. Um, now um, you guys are going to be going with IMX, right? And um, uh, one of the videos you mentioned uh, that many transactions can cause um, like issues regarding fees and stuff like that. Uh, is that why you chose IMX? Um, because you know there's the no fees, transfers fees, and stuff like that, which I think is is a game changer in this in in the industry period. Um, what was the main reason to go with IMX? Because we are big, we love IMX. Both of us, uh, WT and I, were big, yeah. big believers in IMX. We were very involved with them as well. So, um, yeah, why did you choose IMX? Yeah, you're spot on. Essentially, uh, as we were looking at how we wanted the initial uh, mint for Block Lords to look, we 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 expected there to be uh, hundreds of thousands, and we're actually aiming for a million NFTs minted uh, nice. during the initial minting phase. And these are not actual uh, farmer or, or Lord characters; these are the banners, right? And the banners represent kind of what you were talking about, OET, about the, the the different factions within the game, right? So the banners represent the 60 great houses of a block lord. So if we're looking at Game of Thrones as a reference, you know, it would be House Stark, House Targaryen, you know, House uh, House Lannister. And, and we have 60 such houses in the block lord universe. And actually we're custom making flags and banners for our top partners. So for example, YGG will have their own custom banner and they will be flat fighting under the YGG flag. And this is a way, these banners will essentially be the first way for the community to organize and to rally behind the banner, right? And the, the unique lords and ladies who will, be, uh, who will be minted later on will also belong to all of these 60 great houses and for the partner houses as well. Well, there will be some reserved. And essentially, yeah, if we're expecting a million NFTs to be minted, uh, gas becomes a huge issue because, yeah, if we, I mean, we already know we're not going to go on ETH as it currently is. Maybe things will change after the merge, but likely not as much as we'd like. Uh, so when that, mu that many NFTs have to be minted, uh, us as a company, we have to decide, okay, are we going to eat that gas minting cost or are we going to let our users mint it? 
And when you're talking about a min million NFTs, and, and <laughs> if the gas fees are three, four dollars an NFT, then right. yeah, right. You, you you end up looking at a not great so great prospect. So IMX just became a perfect solution for uh, for how we how we wanted to do this initial mint. Uh, it also allowed us to work closely with GameStop, who is now an official partner. They've been nope. releasing our trailers, and uh, we'll we'll gladly be listing some some things on the GameStop marketplace. That said, we are building our own Block Lords marketplace where users will be able to trade our banners, trade our heroes, and kind of join some of the pre-game uh, fun uh, with their NFTs. Yeah, it is. Uh, I can't wait, man. Like I say, the the from everything I've I, we've talked about, from everything we've researched ourselves, from that trailer to what's coming in the future, a million NFTs being mil minted. That sounds amazing. Uh, I'm definitely going to be a few in that number for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I can't wait, man. Uh, that is awesome. Is there uh, if there's anything we missed that you want to talk about? Please let us know. If there's anything you want to let people know right now, let them know. Uh, the floor is yours. Say what you got to say. If we missed anything at all that you want to bring up, no, I mean I think uh, I think we covered a lot of it. But I do want to urge again uh, people to register, pre-register for block boards uh, for the initial mint where the 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 banners will be minted. It is a great way to get engaged, uh, collect some of the. I mean everyone will be able to claim their free banner, uh, free banner pack, and that that pack is essentially enough to claim your own free farmer, right? So. Uh, just get, just do that and you'll be fine. You'll have your piece of the ecosystem and you'll be able to jo join the early access with your farmer. Uh, and long term, I, I just really urge everyone to join the community, help us build this super ambitious game. And uh, yeah, good things take time, but we're really glad that the community is starting to rally support behind this. And we're excited to share more. Uh, I will tease that the trailer is not a one of a kind. You know, I know some companies like to launch a cool trailer and then that's it. But we have a series of these planned. Uh, we have very big plans on the narrative side of block floors and what can be done. And if you like the trailer, uh, I, I, I urge you to think ahead of what the future of Web3 looks like, because in my opinion, uh, your NFT defines you as a player. And this ability to create content based on your NFTs is just starting to kind of gain momentum. And I think that's going to be a huge part of the future of Web3, not only Web3 gaming, but Web3 entertainment. And we want block floors to be on the on the curve uh, ahead of the curve on that so imagine you own an nft lord well maybe one day you'd see that nft lord on a tv show in, on netflix right mm -hmm. or or uh, in a in a youtube series right where that show where we essentially are able to create an entire series based around your nft character that just is... throwing away some future dreams but uh, this is something absolutely like amazing absolutely amazing yeah oh i'm definitely gonna be very very involved in this uh there's no doubt about that whatsoever and i want to say thank you so much for being here and and taking the time to sit with us and uh you're you're absolutely amazing i love the way your your mind works and your brain works and just picking it was just great and uh, very excited to see the future of this game uh like you say it's very ambitious and there's a lot of moving parts and uh, I, I think this game has a tremendous um uh, potential to to take off in this industry I love it. I love it. I love these games too. So um, you're going to be seeing a lot of me. That's for sure. Uh, WT, anything you want to say uh, on the way out? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, first of all, I absolutely love the trailer. I love how he's got the one piece of armor that he throws on, picks up his sword, and he's got to fight three fully armored knights coming at him. Very cool stuff. Well done. I know you have a, 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 a cinematic background and you've been in the mobile gaming space for a while. You've got a great resume for yourself and your entire team. It looks like Meta King Studios has actually grown since the last time we've done a video. I've I seen that happen, so that's cool. Lots of value, lots of production going on in your company. Congratulations on your 30,000 Twitter followers and your partnership with GameStop. I'm glad that you mentioned that because we were going to quickly mention that. And with IMX, uh, I know TPS matters, and they're looking at hundreds of thousands to millions, which is going to work perfectly for what you said of trying to get millions of NFTs out there because you got to have that infrastructure in place. And uh, yeah, just really looking forward to this, just like uh, Bruno said, and hats off to the team, and we'll be watching and waiting impatiently to get our hands Perfect. and say, when game, when yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And a little bit of alpha I'll give you is that GameStop was just the, the start. We've uh, we've just signed uh, with two huge Web2 gaming studios or Web2 studio gaming publishers. We can't announce it yet, so I can't say any names, but those will be uh, one of a kind. So uh, definitely be on the lookout for that.
Absolutely amazing. The future is huge for you guys, uh, Taya, and uh, very, very happy to be uh, early into this as well. So this is this is awesome. So thank you again for sitting down. Guys, you heard them, blocklords.com. Don't forget, uh, pre-register. I'm going to put the link here. I'm going to put it on my Twitch channel as well. We're going to get you guys in there. We're going to get the Twitch community in there as well. And uh, don't forget to pre-register and get yourself set up, and then you'll be able to play too. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. You guys know the drill. Thank you so much for sitting down. We've been waiting... Like, we, we've been so excited for this, and uh, I hope you had a good time today. We, we've just, we love the concept. We love the game. Uh, you already know we've said it 100 times already, and I'm going to tell you 100 more. So uh, thank you so much. All right, guys, we are out of here. We love you. Peace. See you later.